Do you dream of fairies and princesses? Then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Disney Coast to Coast. Hey folks, and welcome to Disney Coast to Coast, the ultimate unofficial Disney fan podcast. I'm Jeff DePauly, and today on the show, I have an exclusive interview with Patty Vincent, who has worked as a show director with Disney on Ice for over 15 years. But before that, she performed as a Disney on Ice skater and worked in many different roles throughout the productions. Listen as we discuss Patty's journey to her current role and what it takes to put together a Disney on Ice production. All of that is coming up right after this. We're living in the age of memberships. So many of us pay for memberships to Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, Disney Plus, the list goes on and on. And why do we pay for this content? Because it's good, quality entertainment worthy of our time and money. But how often do you actually use all of these services you're paying for? My guess is that in some cases, you may be using them less time than you listen to Disney Coast to Coast each month. I produce approximately eight episodes of Disney Coast to Coast every month. If you're spending your valuable time listening to Disney Coast to Coast each and every month, what's it worth to you compared to those other services? $3 per month? $5 per month? No matter what it is, you can help ensure that new episodes of Disney Coast to Coast remain available by becoming part of the Disney Coast to Coast community, gaining bonus content, and showing what the show is worth to you over at patreon.com slash DisneyCTC. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash D-I-Z-N-E-Y-C-T-C. When you visit patreon.com slash DisneyCTC, you'll find various tiers you can join, but if none of those specific tiers interest you, you can always write in your own dollar amount. So if you've been listening to Disney Coast to Coast for a long time and you haven't checked out the Disney Coast to Coast Patreon page yet, take a moment and visit p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash d-i-z-n-e-y-c-t-c. Prepare for some insight. You've tuned in to an exclusive DCTC interview. Patty, thank you so much for coming on Disney Coast to Coast. It's yeah. a thrill to have you here. I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, Disney on Ice is such a tradition for so many people. It's that annual thing that comes through their hometown, which is so lovely for the folks who aren't lucky enough to get to the Disney parks. I know you live here in SoCal, so do you, you're surrounded by Disney all the time for work, but do you get to the parks at all? I do. And actually, when I was young, that's the first thing I did. That was my first Disney experience that, cool. you know, just I bless my parents, but four kids in the back of a car in the 70s, mm-hmm. three days from Toronto, Canada to Disney World in Orlando. That was, Oh, you went to Walt Disney World, yeah, not even, yeah. is that Toronto? Um, is that Toronto on Canada, the east side? Yeah, east okay, side, okay. yeah. yeah. So, um, so it took us three days to get there. And I do go visit the parks here in California. And um, I love it because I'm still a kid yeah. at heart, you know? So it's fun to get to. So you mentioned you grew up in Canada mm-hmm. and you've had a long history with Disney on Ice and I want to get through it before we get to your latest show. But really what started the love of skating for you? Because you started as a performer yes. with Disney on Ice. Yeah. So, I mean, I was four years old when I first put my skates on. Wow. And being in Canada, uh, you know, we have some pretty cold winters. Uh-huh. And so basically my parents would op- lace my skates on, open the back door and push us out onto the ice. Okay. Because our, our yard was ice. And actually, my dad built a jiffy rink. And oh, basically, cool. you know, overnight, it would, it would freeze up, open it up, and our neighbors were skating all over the place. So I, I started basically at four years old. And That's then, crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, lo- I grew up in Massachusetts, so I definitely, like, we never did it, but neighbors certainly built those rinks in their backyard. It's so wild. Yeah. And there's certain winters, at least for us, probably not in Canada, but there are certain winters where you're like, eh, it's not going to be cold enough, consistent enough yeah. to make this happen. Yeah, but- it, it was, though. It was. It was. It, and, the best time of year. It was so much fun because we had to skate. My sisters all skated. Then my brother and my dad would play hockey mm-hmm. all in the same rink. You know, it was, it was, and it was beautiful to be outside. So I just loved it from the very beginning. That's cool. Yeah. And you ended up doing it competitively, right? I did. And eventually that brings you to Disney on Ice. So That's I'm right. curious, you know, you won awards. Mm-hmm. Was that something that like somebody at Feld Entertainment saw and brought you in? Or did you go through a proper audition? No, I, I went through a proper audition and I went 
to Buffalo to audition. And it was something that w I was so curious, like after high school, what are you going to do? And, and I loved skating. And then to tour the world was something that was really inspiring. And when Disney on Ice came to Buffalo, I, I had to go. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, so I auditioned and they hired me. A long time ago. What is, if you can remember, what was that audition process like? I come from a theater background, so I'm used to the whole go in, sing, get a callback sort of situation, but I have no idea about the skating yeah. world. Yeah, so, I mean, back then, they wanted um, you to come to the rink and already be prepared and show, an, like, a two-minute skating number. So you bring some music? Yeah, okay. brought some music, had a program um, created and choreographed, so I'd, you know, show off some jumps and spins. So that's what I did. And then they take you through some skills, skating skills, working with the line captain and seeing how you work with groups of people and stuff like that. And uh, it was a fun but scary experience, you know. Yeah. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted it so badly, and I didn't know what to expect as well. Yeah. But they were so friendly, and it was some. It was a place I wanted to be. What do skaters do if you're not going to, you know, go to the Olympics? What is the career trajectory it, well, for a skater? I think like there. Are, uh, my sister uh, also joined Disney on Ice. And she was with Disney and Ice for a few years. Then she started coaching. Okay. Which is a huge career. Okay. It's fantastic. And it can go for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And so you were eventually, of course, you got hired. You were cast in some of their shows. You were an ensemble skater for a while. And then you became a female line captain. That's right. So you get hired into this, you know, sweet gig. And you were a part of the ensemble for a good amount of time. Do you have any favorite musical numbers? Or, like, what movies were they really doing? Which Disney things were they focusing well, on? Well, we were focusing on, at that time, it, um, it was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Okay. And also, we had a celebration, it was very early on, for Donald Duck. Oh, because it was Big Birthday. Yeah. yeah. And so, we had um, this beautiful ensemble number, and it was, I, I'm an ice dancer, and so there was a beautiful ensemble number um, that I was in and I love the partnering in it and the wearing beautiful costumes and just seeing all the glitter and and uh, you know that was really fascinating and really fun to be a part of a group of skaters together and performing together yeah that it's it's I don't know how you guys do it honestly <laughs> because I watch and I'm just like I would be on my butt immediately but then some of the costumes y'all are wearing yeah uh, make it even more difficult i'm sure like is that a whole learning curve for you it when is it yeah it is and um as far as the skaters go you know because when we're first of all the skaters our skaters are athletes mm -hmm. and um so i think it's really really tricky when we do start layering i mean there's so many layers and so the materials that can be heavy uh the the length of the skirts can be a little daunting so you have to get used to the rotation mm -hmm. uh say for instance when we're doing triple jumps the rotation of a big skirt whipping around your body when you're not used to it yeah is a little challenging yeah i yeah. would imagine so that yeah. sounds crazy so you did that for through 1991 i believe mm -hmm. right so how many years were you skating for i them? was skating uh, from 83 1983 wow. through 91 great yeah and then you you get promoted several times i want to go through these roles because okay. i'm not quite sure what the differences are to be honest okay. uh, in 91 you become a performance director yeah so performance director is basically we travel with the show and i was in charge at that time of the technical performance and the performance overall anything that the audience saw so i would bring notes so I, I and basically i would sit and watch every show which i loved and every show is different every show is different with a different audience as well and just give notes along the way and how we can improve certain things as far as the quality goes you know so i wanted to maintain the integrity of the choreography the staging and everything as well as enhance the performers you know overall so yeah no when you're touring throughout the country obviously you know, an arena is an arena. It's kind of the same thing, but they're also very different, I would say. Mm -hmm. Now, your rink's always the same size, right? No, they aren't. No, no. really? And that's a, that's a good point because that's that's a big challenge because because we tour, we go from different venue to different venue. Our size changes. It can be, it can get a little narrow. It can be a little longer. It can be shorter. No um, kidding. Yeah. That's very surprising. Yeah. I just assumed it was the same size as like a hockey rink We or would something. hope so, but no. <laughs> oh, man. What are some like... Yeah, I'm always used to it being in a like a sports arena. Or th is there any other sort of location that it's not like that? We put in our own ice at times. Really? Yes, and that is pretty standard. But um, huh. yeah, it's uh, but it vary. It does vary. And one of our shows right now that's playing uh, Paris, they are on a very very short 
ice size and and it's basically we have to restage re-choreograph you know relight kind of, re yeah, yeah, yeah that's just everything that's fascinating i had no idea so that was 91 then you get promoted again in 1998 to you go from performance director to production performance director so what's the difference there well i basically that way and that was very short-lived because i got off the road Okay. I stopped touring. Okay. And so therefore I was going around from show to show and basically just sit, sit, sitting with a lot of the, the newer performance directors mm. and kind of giving them some insight and, and sharing my experience with them. Gotcha. That makes sense. And then in 2001, you uh, actually 98 before we move on from 1998, fun fact that I found was that that's the year that it became known as Disney on Ice because before that it was called Walt Disney's World on Ice. That's correct. So yeah. when you were skating, it was Walt Disney's World on mm -hmm. Ice. And uh, I think Disney on Ice, as much as I love putting Walt's name wherever we can, I think Disney on Ice has a nicer ring to I it, so I would too. say. So then in 2001, you become character development director. Correct. And what's that role? So I, I really felt that there was a need for our performers when, like I, I mentioned, they're, they're athletes. Our skaters are athletes and they come to us and we, we have certain expectations. So I studied a lot of, of the movies and the way the characters would move mm. and interact with one another. So it was a matter of me working with every single one of our shows and working with individual performers and basically, you know, focusing on the walk, how they hold themselves, what their postures like, how they interact with the other characters and that sort of a thing. So it was a really, really fun job. And, uh, it got, you know, and, and again, it was off the road and, but there was certainly so much to do because we had, we still had nine touring shows yeah. to go to. <laughs> so, it's a lot of Disney on ice. Yes. Uh, and now you're in the role that you're currently in, and that is as a show director. Mm -hmm. And as a show director, I mean, you've done more than 15 Disney on ice and Disney live shows. So you've been doing it since, well, actually, when did that start for you? Um, the first show that I directed was 2004, and okay. that was Finding Nemo. Okay. Now, as director, I mean, you're really there for the entire process. Yes. So scripts, scenic, comedy costume, music, all of that, all of it. you're kind of overseeing. Mm -hmm. well, do, I mean, you'd been doing it for a while, so maybe you didn't feel this way, but is it a bit overwhelming that first time you do that? Because, you know, you're used to kind of being in a very specific area, working with that. Now it's like, nope, you're overseeing it all. Yeah. And what are like the challenges going from one to the other? Well, it was, it's scary. I yeah. mean, you know, I was approached, yeah, it was back in 2003 was when I was approached and asked to direct the first show. And I, I asked Kenneth Feld, I said, how do I do this? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and he said, you're already doing it. Yeah. And it was so, I thought, well, it's, it was so daunting at the time because I had to really open my eyes and really kind of see the big picture. But I was so curious and I'd always been curious when I was even performing and as far as how, how this, how, how does this happen? Yeah. You know, who, who's in charge of what? How does, how do we get to this? Yeah. Right. So I was very curious. And so when I had the opportunity, I, I really took my time. I worked closely with our creative team and, and our producers helped really helped me and guided me. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's very, very, it, now I'm, I still look at it and every project is different. Every show is different because we challenge ourselves to be better and better and better, yeah. you know? So there's always, um, and I love that. So it, it never feels the same at all. Yeah. And it's, and it's, and it's pretty re rewarding at the end of the day. So the first step would probably be coming up with a script, mm -hmm. right? And is that something you're involved with or is it something that's kind of handed to you? Yes, I am very involved with the script. And first, it's it's almost like getting the creative team together. Okay. So we hire a writer and, and um, costume designer, choreographer. And, and uh, so we all get together and we talk about with the producers about what the theme of the show, what we want to do, what we want to do differently, how we're going to say it differently. So we do get with the writer basically first and we start just talking having mm -hmm. you know f throwing some really fun ideas around and and then you know we go from there and then we we start with the the costuming and the and the scenic and and music and everything that and the movement you know so there's so so many different layers and it's a really really fun process it's really long but i enjoy every every second of it now i have noticed in more recent years the disney on ice the shows tend to be more a medley of different yeah. Disney projects. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was younger, there was more of like 
you know, one sp- in fact, you said you did Finding Nemo was mm-hmm. one of your first. So what was, why was that decision made to stray away from like a single storyline? Yeah, I think it had to do with the attention span. Okay. Uh, and, and I know that for a fact. And uh, especially now we, you know, yeah. it's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it, In the YouTube generation. There you go. Yeah. And um, so we did, I mean, at, back then it was a beautiful experience. People wanted to see something from uh, front to end. Mm-hmm. And and you could pack a lot into it. But now, I mean, the minds are developing. They want to see something new and fast and go and go and up and down and low. And so, it, but it was, it was really, really fun to do a full length because you really could get into the story and yeah. the meaning of it. And did, the heart of it, you know. Did they ever do a Frozen full length? I feel like if they're, they did. Okay. Yes, okay. we did. I was going to say, if if there was one that, <laughs> yes. that was going to yeah. be a full length show, I feel like, plus Frozen on ice, I mean, it's too perfect, right? Yes, so. I know. It was It was perfect. That was ju- that was a gift. That yeah. was just a beautiful gift. And we knew we, we couldn't, you know, cut and paste. It was something that had so much heart. And so it was really important for us to um, really pay attention to it. Maybe we'll frozen too on ice. Who knows? You never know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. So you the scripts, the start, and then the, with scenic costumes, all that stuff. Now you have, you know, people who are experts in those fields that you're working with. But is there, in that creative area, is there a certain realm that you enjoy most? I, I really love, I mean, every step of the way is is very different in, in its own. I think I love the writing. I mm. love working with the writer and, um, you know, cause that's where the story really starts happening. And then, but the costuming and, and everything, just being involved with the costume design and is, is a lot of fun as well. Uh, and then when we get to the lighting and all the, the different visuals that we utilize, but I also love, I love the movement and the music, the yeah. choreography and the music are, are just the heart, right? So yeah. that's what really brings it to life. And that's really fun. Yeah. And once that script's written, you also are involved with recording voiceover that's for correct, it, right? Yeah. So that's, that's a whole other thing. And is that typically done here in Southern California? It is. Okay. Yeah. Where do you guys yeah. rehearse? We rehearse in Ellington, Florida. Okay. So you're rehearsing in Florida, but like the development process is kind of done here? The development process is done here in Los Angeles and the recording and the assembly of the show is also mostly done here. Okay. And, uh, but we also have a pre-production so that we, I, I work with Cindy Stewart, the choreographer for many, many years. And, uh, we work here on generating different ideas, different style of movement before we actually even get into rehearsals, which okay. is a fun process. Crazy, crazy. So it's a long, how long beginning to end for a show? Ooh, I want to say like from the time we, we start even having the conversation, it probably about 14 months. Wow. Yeah. Over a year. Yeah. That's wild. Now the most recent show you worked on is called Disney on Nice presents Mickey's Search Party, and you've there's a lot of different popular movies in that one. We got Coco, Frozen, Moana, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Toy Story, Little Mermaid. Am I missing any? It's a little uh, Captain Hook and yeah, in, yeah, in there. <laughs> but yeah, th- that's the latest show. So how did this one come about? Um, you know, because when you're doing shows that are all kind of uh, these medleys, mm-hmm. differentiating them, I would assume, might be a little bit difficult. It is. I, I think for us, because we always want to do something different. Yeah. And the audience expects that. Mm-hmm. And um, so when we when we go about, we do a lot of research. Uh, we have a team that does a lot of research and, and, you know, what do people want to see? And what haven't we done in a while? And how are we going to demonstrate this? And how are we going to showcase this? And I think the minds of everyone is, it is a little more rapid. Mm-hmm. And um, they want to see their favorite Disney characters. They want to sing their favorite songs. Mm-hmm. They want to dress up like their favorite Disney characters. And so the variety style has really come to, it's very popular so that we can have, you know, we can move through story after story and not so much tell so much of the story, yeah. but they, cause they want to see their favorite characters. And like you said, it's a lot about the music now It is where they, as long as you hit their favorite songs mm-hmm. from the movie, most people are probably pretty happy with that. Yeah, they are. So with uh, Mickey search party, what's the story with that one? Well, first of all, these silly pirates show up and Captain Hook wants to take over Disney on ice. So we, we find clues along the way, uh, with the help of the audience. And that basically leads us to finding uh, Tinkerbell. Okay. So it's really fun show. It's really interactive. Um, we found that it was important for us to kind of break the wall. We call them headers, ba- basically a border around our rink. Yeah. And we found that people really wanted to interact. And so we have really fun moments in our 
Toy Story a segment where we see a projected uh, ball jumping on the screen and then it comes to life. And, and so the audience has the opportunity to kind of bounce this ball around oh, while cool. the skaters kind of follow around. And um, so we really found that the interaction was a very, it's, it's, and it's, moving that much forward the closer we can get the the kids closest to the action we bring the performers out to the audience and try to get the the families in a little closer so with this show i noticed you work with a lot of different levels there's first of all you're working with ice skaters primarily mm -hmm. yet you have them doing things like flying in the air mm -hmm running through the audience doing i oh gosh what was with the wheelies the hoverboard mm -hmm. wheelies a lot of stuff that I would assume these people don't come in knowing how to do. That's correct, yeah. So how do you make sure during the audition process that they're going to be able to do these things? Or have you had skaters that it's just like they can't really grasp that some of those skills? Well, I, I think that we have certain opportunities that the skaters are somewhere very excited to do something different. You know, and to to generate or to create new skills. Um, we actually have a workshop, a six week workshop before our six week rehearsal. Oh wow! And um, it, yes, and we bring in specialists to help us. And it's incredible to see the performers that have never done anything like this before. Yeah. Um, like ride hoverboards on ice, um, and which is still to me, I can't even do it on the sidewalk. I, I don't know, <laughs> but it's really fun because some people want to learn something different and yeah. it's in it and le learn a different skill so it's um it's really exciting for us to see the development and, and performers that have been skating with us for five ten years want to do something different yeah those bending poles <laughs> that i saw those look terrifying how high I up are those there's like probably about 20, 20 feet, feet? Yeah. yeah uh i know <laughs> i know were, were you doing any of that sort of stuff when you were skating or no. it was it was pretty much on the ice yes. at that point yeah so um you know, th this show seems to have a lot of new stuff I had never seen before in a Disney on Ice show, which is super, super cool. I am curious. So through that development process, is the Walt Disney Company involved in a way that like they're in on meetings or is it something where you send them a final script and they have approval or do they kind of just trust Feld Entertainment at this point? We have a, a fantastic relationship with them and it's absolutely incredible. But we do meet with um, the Walt Disney uh, Company and folks from Walt Disney and present and pitch our shows. We okay. work together. Do they sometimes like have ideas of, hey, we want this to be the next one because we see this being a really po or make sure you work Moana in and stuff like that? Well, we uh, are invited to a lot of screenings. Oh, cool. Yeah. And which is really fun part of the, the job, actually, to see uh, the screenings prior to the, the movie opening. Um, and we have a lot of great conversations. They, they pitch some ideas to us to say, hey, this is what we're focusing on this year, if mm -hmm. you're interested, and we'll grab it things. And we ha also have a group of, of people that will go out and ask, you know, families, what do they want to see? Oh, nice. Yeah. That's fun. Now, obviously, technology keeps getting better and better and better, and you guys keep bringing it into the show. And Projection mapping has become a huge thing in the Disney theme parks, but I've also noticed a very big part of Disney on Ice. That's right. And how much fun has that been? I mean, that must that changes everything. That's a it whole does. new canvas for yep. Ice, essentially. Yeah. It does. And I uh, know you're absolutely right. And we had the opportunity to use projection on the ice and then also on the backdrop. And, yeah. it, and it does add, it's another story. It's an another layer of, of storytelling. And it's been a lot of fun for us. And, and that is fun for me, too. It's, it's fun for the entire creative team to try something new and think differently and how we're going to present this show. And when you're skating on something that's moving underneath you and you're chasing it, yeah. you know, and it, it's a really fun. I, I, I absolutely love it when I get to watch as an audience person and to see how everything is moving and trying to connect not just performers and lights, but that projection mapping is is pretty i think it's cool yeah and it allows for scene changes very quickly oh, which yes. is also nice yeah. it's, it's a it's a crazy technology that's you know they people keep figuring out new ways to use it and i don't know if you follow the parks too much but they have this new mickey and minnie's runaway railway opening in florida and that's gonna be a lot of projection mapping but like scene changes and working with prop pieces it sound like it's it's crazy so 
Uh, we haven't seen the end of it, that's for sure. And Dis- <laughs> Disney on Ice no. is using it to their benefit that's right. as well, so that's cool. Uh, now, we've talked about rehearsals. You said that's a six-week process? We have a six-week workshop. That's been about uh, two years now, and that's where we develop different skills. Mm-hmm. And um, it's pretty exciting for us because, you know, we really wanted, what was important to us was that, you know, we needed to get off the ice. Mm -hmm. And how are we going to do that? We can get out to the audience, but how do we fill the space from the ice up to to the ceiling? Now, when you say you needed to get off the ice, why? Just to do something new or because the audience was asking for it or? No, we, we thought it was a great way to interact with the, with our fans, okay. with our, our, our people and, and just get out there and, and, and to break that wall. We felt like the audience was a part of the show sure. in a way where we didn't have those walls around you. Yeah. And um, so it was really important for us to not only get into the audience, but how, having performers in the audience was very, it became very popular. And when you can imagine, uh, you know, yourself, I, I, mean, I was going to say a little child, but me, I'd be sitting there and when there's a performer right there, yeah. it's exciting. It's a very, very important thing to kind of fill the up, upper space as well. So the height, for instance, in Coco, uh, we've got, we, there's sway poles and you know, they're about 20 feet high in the air and, and it's pretty spectacular. At times we can have things kind of lower in scenic elements, lower in from up above, but to have the elevation from down, uh, from the ice upward mm-hmm. to really fill that space is pretty spectacular. Yeah. Cause it's a huge canvas mm-hmm. overall yeah. and within a pretty huge space. So that's very cool. I love, love that you guys are doing that now. Mm-hmm. That's, that's awesome. Now, Obviously, there's a ton of cool days throughout the process. There's, you know, the first rehearsal. There's the first tech day. There's opening day. Is there a day in the process that you, is the most exciting for you? Ooh, the most exciting is probably the first day of rehearsal. First day of rehearsal. Wow. Yes. I, and then the most rewarding is opening night. Yeah. You know, but to see the development and going through the workshop, I mean, it starts because there's so much work that goes into it and so many people involved and to to actually see the process to see the costumes go through its process and the music and the choreography and to see it all come together is absolutely amazing yeah you know that, that's it's it's that's, emotional yeah i would imagine so it's a uh, it's a uh, it's huge. It's there are certain projects I you know, with a theater background. I look mm. at things and I'm like, I get it. I see how that happens, but it, it gets to a scale. Or even thinking of film directing, mm-hmm. there's small movies. Where I'm like, I get that. Like, I get what a director does. Then it gets to a point of like a Star Wars. Where you're like, how does this even happen? Mm-hmm. Like, how does the communication exist that allows this? And that's kind of what Disney on Ice is. It's so huge. Yeah. That um, the communication just I, you've obviously been doing it for a long time, but mm-hmm. the communication has to be impeccable in order to pull this off essentially it does and and you know you have to support your team and you have to trust your team and yeah. the show is going to open yeah. and it's really important that I mean, like you said I have been doing it for a while so I know that that there is a time crunch but we have um, so many incredible people in place at Feld Entertainment and and it's just a well oiled machine and it's just beautiful to watch it all come together. Yeah. How big typically is a cast? Is it around 60? Uh, about 48. 48. Yeah. And then of that 48, how many do you think come and audition? Well, for instance, we have nine shows um, touring the world. And there are times, depending on the casting, where we might pull one of our own performers and move them to one of our newer shows okay. based on the talent. Because we have auditions all over the world, there could be, and we usually have it once or mo- once a week, once a month. Wait it's, a sec, that, that often you guys are auditioning folks? Yes. Year round? Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's been, because we're all over the world. And wow. so, yeah, so, so we don't have, so say for instance, it's not like, okay, December 10th, here we come. This is it. Yeah. Once in a lifetime. Um, so thousands of people. Yeah. That's incredible. Yes. Wow. <laughs> that's, it's, that's a shocking number. I, I love that. I'm curious in your day-to-day life, seeing entertainment and, you know, enjoying it, but also researching it. I'm sure. Are you always keeping your eye out for like new technologies of, Hey, can we work this into the show somehow? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's a part of the, you know, it's like, it's always about how we can not only make a bigger product, how, mm-hmm. how can we be 
better. What is working? The working is the, the beautiful beloved characters, mm -hmm. the beautiful Disney songs, and but it, taking a look at the technology, and it's always about for us, it's like how we can fill the space, mm -hmm. right? And and so how can we get things off the ground? How can we open up, get into the audience, and finding finding ways to do that? And it could be through projection um, mapping. It could be elevating and having sway poles that that sit twenty five feet off the ground. Um, you know, it could be uh, hanging uh, snow machines a little further out so everybody feels like they're immersed in, in the the actual production and they're in the snow. You know, it's yeah. like just finding ways to make it feel like you are a part of the show. And that's what's, that's what's becoming more apparent. You know, as a director, I feel like I, I, I like to look at our, our shows and see. I love going to the shows and seeing how people react yeah. to certain things. And what are they reacting to? And they re ordinarily, the react. I mean, when bubbles fall from. I mean, that <laughs> the kid, reaction is amazing. It is. Isn't it's it? am it's amazing. Confetti, bubbles, yeah. snow. Yeah. Like that does it. Uh, any talk of drones? <laughs> um, you never or, know. Uh, you, you know, it's like anything, nothing's. It's, we're always looking for something yeah. different. Is there any like technology right now that excites you? Well, the projection mapping is really exciting. Yeah. You know, that that just kind of gives us another element. And, and, you know, when you talk drones, I mean, that's something that excites us. Anything, you know, anything new. We're trying, we're always looking for new technology. And yeah. as long as it enhances the, the performance, you know, and the experience of, the, of our guests. Yeah. Do you ever go to trade shows and stuff to check out like technology? I do. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And, yeah. It's important. That's a f that's fun. Yeah. Oh gosh, that, <laughs> that sounds like such a fun part of the job. I love that. Now you um, also have directed Disney live shows, mm -hmm. which is quite a bit different. It's it's you know still a Disney show going on tour, touring the world, I believe, mm -hmm. right? But not on ice, that's on correct. a stage. Mm -hmm. I would assume much easier, or is that a wrong assumption? Oh, well, um, for me, I love, I'm going to call it the round, because it really is when, when we're working on ice and, and just the three-sided theater. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so it was more of a challenge for me, because I hadn't really? worked okay. on stage before. It was a learning experience, which I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, but they're very, they're very different, but very similar in the same that's cool. So you say you, you sit and you watch audiences a lot. And of course, these shows are all over the world. I am curious, you know, one of the great things is it brings it to people who don't necessarily live near a Disney park. But do you see a different reaction from audiences that live near a Disney park of some sort? Hmm. That's well, the, our, fir our the first city that we open is Orlando. Uh -huh. And it's always, uh, I, you know, that's an interesting question. I don't think it for me i don't think it is okay. uh, any different being closer to um a uh, disneyland or disney world park but i do see differences in certain countries um certain different you know certain cities definitely yeah and are when it comes to like the shows all over the world do they they kind of just take turns like they'll be in the u.s for a while and then they'll go overseas or how does that scheduling work do you know well that's does it always start here in the u.s it does. Okay. Yeah. It, and then we um, we tour um, on East Coast, and then the second is the West Coast. Okay. And so, it, 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 you know, things are always moving around. We go to Japan and then Europe and all over the world. Is any of the language changed when you go overseas? Or yes. is it, oh, okay. The songs, no, just yes. the songs as well. Yeah. That's interesting because in the Disney parks, usually the songs are still in English, mm. even if they change the dialogue. Uh, so that's really interesting. Yeah, and it's not always. Some mm -hmm. songs we still have in English, so it just it de depends on the Interesting. Country. Wow. So, that, so it's like a whole other production yes. going overseas. Yeah. Uh, wow. It's it's quite a process. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. It, do you have a favorite Disney property that you like to work with? Hmm. Wow. I I wonder. I mean, I love the the newer, but I also love the classics. Mm -hmm. um, but I I, I want to say, do I have a favorite? I mean. Toy Story is interesting to me only because it's, you know, the scale and the shift and, and how we have to produce it mm -hmm. in a way going from, you know, a toy scale to a human scale. I think that's, that's really fun. I just love the, the classics though as well. And, um, just because of the, uh, beautiful skating movement and, and the duets that we can create. And, but there's so many that we have. I absolutely love all the properties. It's hard to kind of, yeah. say, this is my favorite. That is my, I actually, I love all. I love just working with uh, all the Disney characters and 
you know, and, and loving them for their differences. Yeah, that's awesome. Of course, Disney on Ice is always touring with multiple shows. In addition to Disney on Ice Presents Mickey's Search Party, there's also Worlds of Enchantment, Celebrate Memories, Road Trip Adventures, and Dream Big. So be sure to visit DisneyOnIce.com to find out when one of the touring shows will be near your hometown. The thing I love is tickets start at a very reasonable price, allowing for a fun night for the entire family to enjoy. That's great. I love that. Uh, that it's really affordable, and that's fantastic. I'm curious of the shows I just mentioned. Were you involved with any of the others besides Mickey's Search Party? Yes. I've um, directed mo- most of the Disney on Ice shows. Um, the first one I, uh, was uh, in 2004 with Finding Nemo, and now I'm actually the creative director for um, all of Disney them? on Ice. Yes. Wow. It's a, yeah, it's a joy. It that's really nonstop. Is. It is. It is nonstop, but I, I absolutely love it. It's 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 amazing, and you know it's 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 very special to be involved in something like this so close, you know. Because I've loved Disney ever since I was a baby. Yeah, so you've consistently worked with Felder Entertainment on this, like yes. since you started skating. It's there's been nothing else in between, really. Thirty five years. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. That's exciting. It is exciting. What are you working on next? Can you say? Are you working on a new show? We are. Okay. We're always working on something new. Okay. Yeah. And so. Uh, so when will that launch, or when will we it hear will, about it? Um, it will open in September. Okay. Um, yeah. We're just getting our creative team together okay. right now, and then we and then we start talking That's and, so and start creating, and yeah, it is exciting. I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been fascinating to me. Oh, so. Great. Uh, thank you. Anything else you want to add before we get going? Come see us. Fantastic. <laughs> and you, no excuse. It's coming somewhere near you. I hope you all enjoyed that interview with Patty Vincent. I'd like to once again thank Patty for coming on the show and sharing her Disney on Ice experience. If you haven't listened yet, you can now tune into last week's episode all about the epic new attraction Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, and be sure to tune in next week where we have a discussion about Frozen, the Broadway musical. And for you longtime listeners, you may be excited to hear a voice in the co-host chair for that episode that you haven't heard for a while. Of course, if you want to hear that episode early, you can do it over at at patreon.com slash DisneyCTC. Other than that, folks, have a magical day. Bye! Thanks for listening to Disney Coast to Coast. Have a magical day! <laughs> Disney Coast to Coast is produced and hosted by Jeff DePauly. Learn more about the podcast and become a supporter at DisneyCoastToCoast.com.